man's choice. Christianism puts a great emphasis upon man's choice. Does the Bible teach that man's choice determines whether he goes to heaven or hell? And does man have the free will to accept Christ or to choose God to be his father? According to what is termed Christianity, the answer is yes. But this is a lie and has no foundation in the sacred scriptures. People the world over have been deceived into this perverted concept by church kike clerics recruiting followers to their brand of Christianism. It is all fleshly fear driven. These ecclesiastical hucksters are nothing more than snake oil salesmen. Their tonic will bring salvation no matter what the ailment. If you will accept Christ and join their church, then you are good to go. Playing upon man's natural fear of what might happen in the great hereafter, they proclaim that he has absolute control of his destiny by what he chooses. He has the free will to accept Christ, to choose God as his Father, and to go to heaven escaping the fires of hell. Appealing to this natural flesh-driven fear, their whole pitch is aimed at getting an abundance of followers, since who would not want to say a few magic words just in case? They call it fire insurance. This is all an illusion and has no foundation in the Bible. Who do you think Jesus was talking about in Matthew 7, 15 through 23? Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Evidently, these false prophets are disguised as sheep, Christianity, in order to make a feast off of the flock, which is what ravening wolves do. The whole time they are doing things in the name of Jesus, they are not his, but are the workers of iniquity. No matter what these purveyors of perversion say, God does the choosing. It is God's will, and not man's free will, that is in control of all things. What happens to you in the great hereafter has nothing to do with you saying some magic words, but it is predestinated by Almighty God. In case you are still caught in the spider web of deceit, ask yourself, did the disciples choose Jesus? The answer to this is given in John 6, 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Also read John fifteen sixteen, where he says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you. This applies to more than just the disciples, for Jesus says in Matthew twenty sixteen that many be called but few chosen. He reiterates this in Matthew twenty two fourteen, For many are called, but few are chosen. The Apostle Paul, on the way to Damascus, to arrest and imprison followers of Jesus, did not accept Christ, did not choose God to be his father, did not repent of his sins, did not say any magic words, did not believe in some churchism, and did not have faith in some doxology, but was chosen by God to become a witness of Christ. Read about this in Acts 9, 3-20. There was a man named Ananias to whom in verses 15 and 16 the Lord said, Go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, nations, and kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. 
Paul not only knew who did the choosing, but also when this choosing was done, as stated in Ephesians 1.4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. If this hits your hot button, then you will be launched into the stratosphere of hysteria by Titus 1-2, which says that we have eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, and that it was in the heavens when our names were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Revelation 17-8 all this is God's hidden wisdom and is a mystery, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God hath ordained before the world unto our glory. Here comes more fuel for the flight to hysteria. Man does not get to play God except in his own ego-driven fleshly mind. But it is Yahweh God that does the choosing, made a book of whom he chose, and did it all before the world began. He has an absolute predestinated plan that man's choice, free will, or any other delusions of grandeur will never change. Orthodoxy can rant and rave and teach all manners of heresy, but it will not alter the divine plan. God is the author and the finisher of all things.